Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel Trading Secrets. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. For those of you who do not know, my name is Ali. I have over 20 years experience teaching accounting, economics, business and law. Through this channel, I'll be providing some stock analysis and a quick update on the million dollar channel. Mm -hmm. If anybody's not aware of this, this is a journey of an investment of $1,000 to a return of $1 million over a period of three years using a strategic or compound return investing. So the objective is try to get 201 trades, each with a return of 3.5%. It's not 201 consecutive trades, we do take into account losses. So for further details about how to join us for less than $9 a month, information is available in the description below. In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you a $98 million award by the SEC to two whistleblowers. We're also going to be looking at Tixamal APDN, which is currently up over 40% on the day and also up over 526% over the previous 10 days when we first called it out. So uh, before we uh, get started, let's have a look at what's happening in the market. So first headline here from CNBC, we can see the Dow Jones is up 200 points after Powell has signaled a Fed rates cut. Uh, so we will look at we will look at details of these shortly. But from Bloomberg, we can also see here <coughs> Fed's Harkett is saying is saying as a rate cut path should be methodical, and Powell has said the time has come for the Fed to cut rates. Uh, so potentially we're looking at this in September. So in terms of a summary, he first of all stated here his confidence has grown that inflation is on the path for two percent. Time has come for policy to adjust. Timing and pace of rate cuts will depend on incoming data and we don't seek or welcome further labour market cooling. So, um, and another news I'd like to share with you here um, is uh, in terms of Microsoft and Microsoft have, have planned a September cybersecurity event to discuss changes after crowds that the, the problems that they were had with CrowdStrike in terms of the outage. So this event will take place on the September the 10th and I'm, I am hoping it gives a significant boost to the stock of Microsoft, especially if we, we do not want to see uh, a similar uh, thing happen again. And finally, uh, let's have a quick look at how the markets are performing at time of editing. We can see again all green here from the Dow Jones, S&P 500, NASDAQ and also the small cap 2000. Let's start by doing a follow up from the previous video where we looked at George's statement potentially challenging FINRA with more questions and uh, shout out here to Sensi who's posted with regard to George Palikaris he's now getting the good stuff out. He produced the MMAT proof of payment for the processing of the MMTLP corporate action uh, and there is no proof of payment for a corporate action change which FINRA obviously completed and this shows that MAT, MMAT did not request the change so therefore it looks almost certain that FINRA violated 6490 and obviously also lied uh, but again no response from FINRA there so with regard to the corporate action what Red ED has stated again uh, the corporate action deficient before publishing it to the FINRA's daily list is the proper procedure but it would have given meta materials an opportunity to appeal so again this opportunity was never ever uh, provided because obviously the dates were modified and um, it looks like meta materials were told not to uh, do anything and just keep quiet so uh, with regard to the sec uh, they stated here do you know uh, the five key questions to ask before committing your hard-earned money to any investment opportunity. So I think as far as I'm concerned, uh, the people in the MMTLP community are asking the question, first of all, why did FINRA allegedly breach their own rule 6490, which is the processing of company-related actions? Uh, so I think that's a question we'd like a response to. And uh, what Scott has posted here with regard to uh, FINRA as well, he states FINRA is on the bubble with the tactical pause provided by a filing of motion to preserve ESI and, and also the motion for expedited limited discovery. So uh, these are the areas uh, that he's going to obviously challenge and these include the appointments clause, non-delegation clause, equal protection clause uh, amongst others. So I think what I'd like to focus on is the equal protection clause which is highlighted as the fifth amendment but it is also also covered under the 14th amendment as well so with regard to the fifth amendment the due process clause uh, applies to the federal government has been interpreted by the supreme court to also include an implicit guarantee of equal protection so how does it protect investors in the u.s financial markets or should we say how should the courts ensure that this is used to protect retail investors in US financial markets? First one, it protects against arbitrary discrimination by the federal government. But I think what's more interesting for me 
is number two, three and four. And number two is the regulation of the federal agencies. This includes the SEC and other federal agencies. And I will take that to include FINRA uh, because they regulate markets and they must operate in a manner that is consistent with the Fifth Amendment. And I think that does not seem to be the case. So if an agency implements a rule that discriminates against a class of investors without valid reason. So let's say the two class of investors here are uh, the retail investors and the market makers and the hedge funds without a valid reason then investors could challenge the rule under the due process clause so credit for scott for uh, using this as one of his angles and uh, the next one is equal access to market opportunities again i believe that did not take place and the fourth one is protection against regulatory overreach so uh, investors could invoke the fifth amendment to challenge regulatory federal regula uh, regulations that disproportionately harm a specific class of investors. So this class of investors is the retail investors uh, who were harmed and the, it ensures that regulatory actions do not unfairly disadvantage smaller or minority owned investment firms compared to larger, more established firms. So I think there is no doubt whatsoever that Nextbridge Hydrocarbons is a much, much more smaller firm compared to the likes of Apple, Nvidia. Uh, so again, we do tick this box. Let's now have a look at details of the $98 million awarded by the SEC. And what I posted earlier is the SEC have awarded $98 million to two whistleblowers with payments made out of, an, out of an investor protection fund, which was established by Congress. So the two whistleblowers are not named. Uh, so what I would now like to do is give a shout out to the FINRA UPC Advisory Board. We know uh, almost everybody on there. So here's your chance to become a multimillionaire by just filling in a submit a link, uh, submit a tip link on the SEC link. And if you wish, you will forever remain anonymous as per the SEC whistleblower guidelines. So this also includes uh, people like Patricia Cassimates, who were covered in the previous video. Uh, however, um, there is one downside from their point of view, and that is they could indir indirectly help uh, the potential 65,000 families of the MMTLP community get their answers. So let's have a look at a quick look at the press release, which here is dated um, August the 23rd, 2024, the SEC has issued uh, awards totaling $98 million to two whistleblowers. Uh, so uh, first of all, we can see here that uh, the first whistleblower's tip pr uh, prompted the opening of the investigations and therefore provided critical additional information and ongoing assistance. So, assistance. so as a result, the whistleblow, this whistleblower received an award of $82 million, and that is quite staggering. Second whistleblower whose information was provided later uh, significantly contributed to one aspect of the actions and he or she will receive an award of $16 million. So these are actually absolutely huge, huge awards by the SEC. So it goes to show how big these violations were. Uh, and they go on to say here, without these violations, uh, sorry, without these whistleblowers information, uh, the violations would have been difficult to detect. So it is critically important that the whistleblowers do this. So um, uh, in order to protect not only retail investors, but also protect the United States financial markets. And finally, I'm going to finish off by having a look at tick symbol APDN. And those who have been following the channel will know that this has been covered previously in a number of videos. And today there was also some breaking news that we shared in our biotech channel in the Discord with regard to the company applying uh, for DNA uh, submission and a validation package which we'll look at uh, shortly and uh, this was also covered with regard to news of uh, a confirmed monkeypox case in Wayne County, the United States, which I think is critical. So uh, with re regard to what is happening right now, but before we look at the news uh, and the chart, let's have a look at a, a profile, a quick profile of the company. So the APDN is also known as Applied DNA Sciences. This is a biotech company looking at developing technologies to produce and detect uh, um, deoxyribonucleic uh, acid using polymerine chain reaction to enable both the production and detection of DNA. But obviously we also know that they are also working on 
uh, the monkeypox virus as well. So let's have a look at the news here from Access Wire, broken on Friday the 23rd of August 2024. And the headline here is the company have submitted a validation package to the New York State Department of Health to expand the linear and monkeypox virus number one assay to the Mpox Clade 1. So uh, this is great, great good news for the uh, company. If we look at further down in, the, in terms of the press release, uh, they stated here that um, the, the assay was previously approved as a laboratory developed test for the detection of monkey, monkey pox uh, in September 2022. So if approved for the testing, uh, the company could provide clinical testing services uh, in obviously laboratories starting with the state Stony Brook, New York for monkey pox. Uh, so this is going to be something that is developing and uh, hopefully um, the company can take advantage of this if the virus gets worse. So let's have a look at the chart. So remember this was covered uh, when this was trading below 50 cents right now it's a uh, time of editing it is up uh, trading at around about two dollars and 56 i think today at time of editing it's up close to 40 percent uh, and overall up in excess of 523 percent at two dollars and 56 so congratulations to everybody who got into apdn so if you would like to get live breaking news as well as a copy of our daily stock alerts and the weekly watch list details are in the description below thank you very much for watching please stay tuned